Hi, this is Thane Phelan from the Greater Yakima Chamber of Commerce. Tonight, we're at the Yakima Valley Museum. Come inside with us. Showcase Yakima, a partnership of KYVE 47 and the Greater Yakima Chamber of Commerce. Underwritten in part by Thorner Kennedy and Gano, meeting the legal needs of the Yakima Valley since 1976. And by Argus Insurance, helping you today to secure your tomorrow. And by Yakima Valley Regional Medical and Cardiac Center, home of the 15-minute ER guarantee. And by Central Valley Bank, large enough to serve, small enough to care. And by Treetop, 50 years of growing good. And by Fitterer's Furniture, quality furniture since 1896. Good to see you again. Welcome, Thane. Welcome to the museum. All right. Well, one of the real jewels here of the Yakima Valley, and uh, thanks for inviting us in today. We really want to kind of take a look at the museum, and uh, uh, for people that haven't been here, maybe people that have, that don't understand about all, everything that you guys do. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I guess uh, a little bit later, we're going to walk through one of your areas that you've been working on. We well, know. right now, tell us a little bit about uh, about the museum. How do you get everything that you get? How are you guys? Uh, how, how do you keep going? You know, we've been here since the 1950s. This building has an increased in size and and increased in objects. We have over 100,000 objects here mm -hmm. that we take care of, that we preserve for uh, future generations. We also have programs here, all kinds of act activities here. We really become a community center. Well, tell me a little bit about just some of the objects that you have here of historical significance. Where, where does all that come from? Yeah, yeah. All the, all the items that we have here in the museum really tell about Yakima history. So mm -hmm. all the things that have that we've uh, collected over the years have been given to us. 99% mm -hmm. of the things have been given to us by people in the valley. So they uh, they come in almost every week and give us something new, and which adds to our collection. So so, so as people uh, here in the valley, they really can contribute to their own Yakima Valley Museum. That's by, true. I guess if, if somebody passes away or if there's a family collection, that uh, then mm -hmm. you guys take care of that, right? Right, that happens. And actually a lot of people like to feel that they have some place that their things can go mm -hmm. and be uh, treasured by future generations. Okay, and so uh, and that's a lot of your, uh, your items that you get right. here. And you're going to take us through a little bit today about how you take care of those items? Right. Actually, ha after an item comes in, we mm -hmm. actually, it's called accessioning. We're going to go through the whole process of how the product piece gets accessioned and where it goes and how it gets taken care of and how it gets actually moved all the way to an exhibit. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So that's some of the things we'll take, take a look at today. Now, specifically, you said you have a, uh, a new exhibit you're working on. We do. We have a McWhorter sheep wagon, which is a very large object, uh -huh. and then we have all the things that came in with that. So we have objects that accompany that in the exhibit, and we have photographs and documents and histories that all came in from one family. And what's nice about that is it really gives us a good picture of the entire uh, object, you know, all right. the background behind it. And, and the process, I guess, of putting it together and yes. making it an exhibit. Let me take you around the museum and show you all the people that make an exhibit possible and make it, this museum run. All right, great. Okay. It'll be good to meet them. Okay, let's, let's go. go. I think you're now in our Sunquist Research Library, which is our archives for oh. the museum. And so this is where all of our documents and photographs are stored. We use a lot of the material in here for exhibits, for research exhibits, and a lot of people actually come in this very room and do research themselves. So as new exhibits uh, come in, they come in, in in objects and also in flat material like photographs and documents, and then they're processed here. Mm -hmm. And so Debbie Valchek, who's our archivist, is actually Debbie. processing some of the photos from our new McWhorter sheep wagon. An exhibit. And as she gets objects in, like this, some of these, most of these are flat and some come in frames. Of course, we have to remove them from the frame, sure. scan them, and then she documents them and gives them a number and marks down any information that she can. A lot of this information comes from the people who give it to us, so we try to get as much information from them as possible. And if you can. don't have that information, then do you do a little research background we, on it to find out? Maybe period of what when it was taken. Like yeah, that. yeah. A lot of times you can just look at the photographs and you can tell, mm -hmm. you know, like what they're wearing. You can kind of tell the period. So we might put it in a circa, you know, 1920, 1930 kind of period if it's from that age. But the um, so we can try to write down as much as we can just by looking at the object. Mm -hmm. But we do like to do some research. We also try to get as much as we can from the family. And those are made available to the public once again. They are. Once they're processed here, uh -huh. we scan them and put them on uh, the computer. All the data is entered at that uh -huh. point, and then they're uploaded to our yakimamemory.org website. So okay. the public and can Now, the memory.org, is that available to anyone to, to get those photographs? Anyone can go online and look for those photographs. If they mm -hmm. see a photograph that they want to use, then they mm -hmm. contact us, and we can get them a higher resolution print.
So, David, you've got these photos here, and uh, now what is what is Debbie doing with them? Well, after she finishes processing them, we, we need to go in and scan them and get them ready for to put the information into the database and then upload them to the server. Oh, okay. So these are all these are now being processed to become part of the McWhorter Sheep Wagon exhibit. So let's take you in there and show you how we scan them and input them to upload them to the internet. All right, sounds good. Okay, Thane, as we get photos in, we put them into the scanner. Those are scanned, uploaded to this computer, where the data from the information from this sheet gets input into our software, which is called content, and then that's uploaded to the internet for use on Yakima memory. Thane, this is one of my favorite part of the archives, because this is the, all these newspapers that go back to the er, late 1800s, wow, and then up to about the 1950s, Yakima Daily Republic, yeah. Weekly Herald, and when we get to do research, we get to come back and look at these. Uh -huh. One of the big problems is you start opening them up and looking at them, and you forget what you were researching, because there's yeah. all kinds of fun stuff in I there. I imagine you know? that you can get lost back here. Right. A lot of the social columns are really fun to read, uh -huh. and if you read a lot of the news, you'd, you'd swear you were reading them out of today's paper. I mean, it's the same news over and over again. Mm -hmm. A lot of fun. So these are uh, these papers go back now. How how far back do you guys go? How, think, how far up should I say? Do you collect the papers? Right. Our our latest one, our last one, I think is around the 1890s or 1888, okay. and they go up to the 1950s. Okay. From that point on, they're kept on microfiche at the library. Okay. Yeah. Very interesting. Hey, Mike. This is Thane, Mike Seibel, who is our curator of collections. He's actually working on some of the objects from the McWhorter collection. Very nice. Mike, tell us a little bit about some of the items you have in front of you. You have some unusual items. Uh, tell us, what, what, do you, what, are we, what are we looking at here, and what are you doing with them? Yeah, this is from the McWhorter uh, donation of the sheep herder wagon, mm -hmm. and these are from the interior of them. And one interesting thing is an old dinner bell that they actually just made out of tin cans and, and a wire. That is, that is interesting. And so now, do you do any restoration on something like that? Yes, we, we definitely want to stabilize this. We want to get all the, uh, the dust off of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, also, with, with everything, we get to number them. Every single object in the museum is actually numbered, and it has actually paperwork oh. associated with it. So. We know exactly where every single item is that's been donated to the museum, and we have over 60,000 objects here. Now, are they all kind of stored down in this area? And most of the, uh, the items are actually here at the museum. A couple of our larger items are off-site storage, but most everything is here, so we can actually do a good inventory and make sure that they have a good environment. To, when are you, you know, how long have you been doing this, Mike? Uh, over 11 years here and five years before I came here. Okay, so here in the Yakima Valley, you've probably seen some interesting items. Let us in on the, the kind of the behind the scenes. What's the most unusual or odd item you've gotten here in the Yeah, Valley? I'd like to show you uh, one of our storage rooms full of really interesting things. One of the most interesting items is this a sheep horn uh, bowl. Wait, and, no, it's, it's actually carved from a sheep horn? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, actually, wow. it's amazing. Pretty much what they did was uh, take it off the ram, mm -hmm. uh, slice it in half, and then, pla uh, and then place it in boiling water, uh, lash it down to a rock, the shape uh, of the bowl that they wanted. And then after it dries, they mm -hmm. could actually carve into uh, the sheep, ho uh, sheep horn. So it looks like a helmet or something like that, but this is actually used for, for a bowl. Yep, yep, and for so, food. Uh-huh, okay. All right, Mike, well, let's walk down the table here. Some other things you're working on. Uh, I know you've got a Native American exhibit that you're working on. Yes. So, and, and obviously lots of baskets here. I'm guessing this has something to do with it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. right, yeah, else? we have some uh, really a lot of interesting things like uh, this 1850s octopus bag. Wow. And uh, pretty much everything that we have in the museum we really have to take care of. Uh, not only just for storage, but also exhibits and really prep them up and r make them really look good. Mm -hmm. And a lot of things that we have to do is actually clean uh, the beaded bags and also a lot of brass work. So uh, like this, Gee, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, this wonderful uh, vest has a lot of brass on it and we really had to make that shine for the exhibit. Pretty meticulous work then to go in and clean everything yes. on this? and Q-tip work. Okay, so what is the handling procedure? I see you have gloves on, yes, um, and so and that's probably part to keep the oils off uh, everything. Like exactly, that. We, yeah. we want to preserve these things for generations to come. It's not just for for uh, our visitors today, but but definitely for for decades to come. Well, very interesting. Yeah, so a lot of uh, wonderful uh, work. We also mm -hmm. have to uh, do some 
interesting stitch work. We have some beaded uh, bags that actually come apart, and we actually have to reversibly fix them, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, we actually document everything that we uh, do. So uh, if uh, it comes off of exhibit, we can actually reverse what we've done to stabilize it if uh, in back in storage, sure. it's, it's okay. But when things get uh, into exhibits, uh, they have to be propped up, and we have to really make sure that they're nice and stable. Well, I appreciate you showing us behind the scenes here at the Yakima Valley sure. Museum. Mike, what a pleasure to meet you. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, David, tell us, uh, it looks like you had a pretty extensive workshop down here. Uh, tell us where we're at now. Yeah, this is the workshop for all the exhibits in the museum where we build everything. And the guy that builds it is Andy Granito, our curator of exhibits. Nice to meet you, Andy. Good to meet you. All right, so, Andy, what are we working on here? Um, I'm actually bending a piece of plexiglass, uh -huh. and it's ready to be kind of locked into its position. I'm making a piece of plexiglass to hold... Um, a do not touch sign for our exhibits to keep the kids from climbing all over our new McWhorter sheep camp wagon. Okay, so this is this is one of the like an example of something that you do here. Now I see you got a pretty good shop here. I mean, this is like a guy's dream down here. You I mean you got? Tools, I love got, it exactly. So uh, everything you guys do for your displays, you pretty much make in here. Everything from designing on the drafting table or the mm -hmm. computer to designing our labels to building our platforms to building even walls. Mm -hmm. We're kind of rare in that way. Most museums hire this stuff out. We build it all in-house. Everything from museum stuff like plexiglass to uh -huh. building cabinets and stands and basic carpentry stuff. Well, that, that's cool because, you know, I noticed all the displays here and you guys have some pretty extensive stuff. So you, you work with what, what are some of the materials, all kinds of woods and plastic? Actually, and a lot of, like, particle boards mm -hmm. and uh, because of our artifacts a lot of woods off gas mm -hmm. and they're not good for the artifacts some particle boards off gas so we have to okay. seal everything with paints and MDF particle board is what I use most but mm -hmm. it's a lot of materials that they use in museums in fact I'd love to show you what I'm making now okay. also for the sheep herder wagon All right. and this will be a little step to allow our school tour kids to get up and look inside the sheep herder wagon sounds good let's go take a look at that This is the step that I've been making for uh, the sheep herder wagon we've uh -huh, talked yeah. about. And this is so that the kids can step up and get a better look into the sheep herder wagon. But because we don't want them to touch the wagon itself, because sure. it's an artifact, we give them something they can hold on to. Mm -hmm. And we put the do not touch sign on it. You of see course. these all over the museum. Yeah, absolutely. And, and everything made right here in your shop. Everything's made right here in the shop. In fact, we're going to install this a little later today. All right. Well, thank you, Andy, for showing us what you do here behind the scenes at the uh, Yakima Valley Museum. Appreciate it. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Good to meet you. All right. David's got another section, so let's go up and take a look at that. Okay. Well, Thane, this is another area of our exhibit preparation. Mm -hmm. As you see, Peg is working on a form mm -hmm. that's going to have that vest that we saw in collections that we need yeah, a vest. a little bit earlier there. Yeah, yeah, when she gets finished, it will go on a, a form just like this. And okay, actually, so yeah, this you is, got one then there. This is a finished form right here, mm -hmm. a lot like the one that will be out in the exhibit. Okay, well, let's go take a look at that exhibit. Okay. Okay, here we are. Uh, we've got, uh, well, what we're working on back there. Right. That's right. Now, um, Peg and Andy are working on getting this ready to go into the exhibit case, mm -hmm. getting it on the final form. And this is this is going to this big case here now. This right. is, uh, we're on the main floor of the Yakima Valley Museum here we now. We are. And uh, this, this case, tell us a little bit about, because we're, this is designed to move wherever you need it to it go. It is. It's, it's actually almost in a Thule Lodge shape, mm -hmm. which is an American Indian shape. And it's made so it can move. Now, one thing we need to do in all the things that are down here on the lower four floor are able mm -hmm. to move, and we do that on purpose because we have a lot of programs, other events that go on here. Mm -hmm. So we need everything to move out. And what's interesting is that Andy and Peg have parking spots for everything. So when everything needs to move, it goes into parking spots, right. and then we're able to have events down here. Yeah, and this is, I mean, a big, beautiful area for that. Right. Uh, but uh, then the other, we've been talking about the McWhorter Sheep Wagon. So you're going to take us and we're going to take a look at uh, all the things you've been preparing, getting ready for to uh, put that on display. Right, and that one's right upstairs. All right, so we'll head up on. that way. Okay, sounds good.
So now Peg and Andy are getting all the items that we had finished processing through collections, mm -hmm. and they're going to put them now into the final exhibit. Yeah, we saw the uh, dinner bell earlier, and uh, right. a lot of the things here that. Uh, so the dinner bell yeah. goes in. Mm -hmm. And what time is dinner, Peg? <laughs> 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 well, it's amazing to see. Now, uh, tell us a little bit about here. This is one of your new exhibits, the yes. uh, McWhorter Sheep Wagon. Correct. So tell us a little bit, where, where did this come from? Well, it actually came from the McWhorter family. And what was interesting about it was that it wasn't, didn't have this original carriage on the bottom. It had, mm -hmm. it had been updated over the years and had rubber tires on okay. it. And so Andy and Peg worked on it to actually restore it to a period piece. So it has a new, or an old new, right. carriage underneath and then had a new cover put on, so it restored it to the time when it would have been used for as a sheep bike. Yeah, and then the pieces, uh, obviously, we've seen that uh, have been built here throughout the day that you right. guys do all right here. Right, and so now Annie's going to create a piece so the kids can you know, step up and look in. Very nice. They now, we were in that in the museum where you're not allowed to touch anything, but mm -hmm. we have this special place in the museum where you can actually touch things. This is called the Children's Underground, mm -hmm. and I'd like you to meet the Curator of Education, who's Kathy Sample, and she'll tell you a little bit more about the Underground. And a lot of the kids you get down here from classrooms, you have schools visit and things like that? Mm -hmm. We do school tours. In fact, yesterday I just had a school from Barge Lincoln, 53rd graders. Okay. And um, we did a geology lesson with that. Uh, in the spring, we do a story fest where we do over 200 kids a day for three days. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's just a nice place for the teachers to come and make history come alive for their classrooms mm -hmm. uh, instead of just textbooks and dry. Yeah, so you got a little classroom out mm -hmm. here and you've got toys and things for the kids and then even a little town. We do. Down in, yeah. the, lower, in the lower underground is the... Yakima, North Yakima, 1885, child scale um, city with a general store, a bank, mm -hmm. a hotel, and a post office. So is this section of the museum pretty much open when the museum is with, for the kids then? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's open whenever the museum is, um, some special hours, uh, birthday parties. Oh, okay. So. So a good thing not to miss if you come to the Yakima Valley Museum. Definitely, especially if you have children. All right, well, thank you, Kathy. You're good welcome. Good to meet you. Thank you. Well, David, we've seen uh, some interesting ex exhibits that you're doing here currently, the Native American and your McWhorter Sheep Wagon. Here's another very interesting one that right. I know has been a favorite here in the Valley. Tell us a little bit right. about this and some of the other exhibits that you do. Right. This is our Head Over Heels exhibit, and actually yes. it's been so popular that we're going to carry it over another year. Okay. One thing we try to do is we get a lot of special exhibits in so that every time you come to the museum, there's something new for you to see here. Mm -hmm. And so we do all kinds of subjects from art to history to shoes. This has got to be one of the biggest collection of women's shoes ever, isn't That's it? That's right. And this is only half the collection. This wow. is 600 pair. There's actually 1,200 pair in the collection, and it's still growing. Wow, that's incredible. And so now we're going to start working on some other exhibits uh, out in the, in the museum, bring more of our collections that you saw out on display, because that's one thing we want to do is get a lot of objects out here. Mm -hmm. And one of the uh, people that I'd like you to meet, actually, is our director, who's John Ball. And he can tell you a little bit about more of the museum that we're doing here. Hi, John. Hi. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. All right, thank you, David. Hey. John, yeah. good to see you. Good to see you. So tell us a little bit of yeah. uh, the Yakima Valley Museum. How long is it? How long have we been operation here? The museum has been in the valley since 1951, but it's actually the third attempt to have found a museum. They tried to found a museum in Yakima Valley as early as 1917, mm -hmm. uh, tried again in the 1930s, and finally it took the Daughters of the Pioneers of Washington mm -hmm. uh, and their efforts to make it stick in 1951. Okay, so what, was, what, was, what happened in 51 that made it uh, possible to finally get a permanent Yakima Valley Museum? Uh, I think one of the impetuses was finally World War II was over. Mm -hmm. There had been an interest in doing this. A lot of the people who had been kind of early settlers in the valley were beginning to you know, die and, and, and obviously not going to be here. So there's a lot more pressure to do it. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, they were building a new city hall downtown, uh, the current city hall, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. And so as a result, uh, they took some space in there. Just the city gave them some space, essentially. Uh, it didn't last long, however, because like uh, this will come as a great surprise, I'm sure, to most people. But city government grew so mm -hmm. that within well, about course, three yeah. years, they couldn't give space to anything that wasn't part of government. Uh -huh. And the museum's not part of, part of uh, any governmental agency. So... 
that's when we moved to this site. Oh, so you've been yeah. at this, this site since that time? Since 1957, and essentially. And you yeah. continue to grow. We, we saw downstairs, I mean, the, your, your collection continues to grow as well. Yes, yes. We have one of the largest collections actually in central, actually in eastern Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, we have huge collections of everything from textiles to carriages to cars mm -hmm. to shoes, like you'll see here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and uh, archival material, uh -huh. uh, books, documents, photographs, uh, Pretty much anything, and that's how. Uh, and that's how one way that people can be involved in their local museum is to, if they find something that they think is historical significance, they can call you guys. Right, and they don't even have to necessarily determine whether it's historical or not. Uh -huh. Some of the things, in fact, that we're looking for are some of the most common things uh, that you wouldn't even think we would want. Mm -hmm. um, a good example of that, for example, is men's clothes. Uh, men's clothing from any period is really hard to find. Oh, okay. Men tend not to change. I mean, they'll keep their dress clothes. <laughs> sure. But their but their everyday clothes just tend to get used for the paint clothes or the sure. car rags or all that kind of stuff, and uh, they're hard to find. Oh, okay. And so sometimes people ah, they don't want these old clothes, but they actually there are kind of things like that we do. And so this is really a gem of the Yakima Valley. So what are some other ways people can support their the Yakima Valley Museum and and uh, some of the services they offer? Well, I think, you know, obviously, like most places, uh, particularly in this day and age, we are, uh, I think, something that most people don't recognize is we are actually a fully nonprofit agency, and we are not an entity or supported by any public agency like city or county or state. Uh, all our income, revenue, and whatnot all comes from private contributions. In fact, this building has all been built with private contributions over the years, which is pretty rare, actually, and Absolutely. pretty, pretty uh, notable. There isn't another museum of this size in the state of Washington that's been built that way, um, nor maintained that way right now. So certainly one of the ways, of course, is it takes money to run it. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> sure, yeah. So becoming a member and, yeah. and a supporter and things like that. And, uh, and then, of course, bringing people here and, and supporting us in that manner. Um, we have a variety of programs here. I mean, we talk about the exhibits, we talk about the collections, but we also do Oh, we have music programs here. There's been folk music programs. There's chamber music programs. There are lectures, um, uh, a whole variety of things. We've even, we've have everything, even from sometimes uh, the building is used for uh, funerals. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's more of a, in many ways, more of a community center as much as it's a museum. And we really pride ourselves on that. We really want the museum to to be a part of everyone's life, no matter whether they're interested in the current exhibit or not, but the fact that it is the place that's keeping the stories alive and a place that they can feel welcome and come and, and, and uh, participate. All right, well, thank you so much again for inviting okay. us in today. All right. What we want to do right now is we, we've seen some great uh, exhibits that you have mm -hmm. going on here today, and what we want to do is take a quick uh, few minutes here and take a look at some of the other great parts of the Yakima Valley Museum mm -hmm. that we may have missed today. Great, thank you.
Hey Dave, great to come in today and learn about the Yakima Valley Museum and all the things that you guys do here. So appreciate you having us in today. So tell us uh, anything else that we want to mention that uh, you were talking about your digital. Yeah. Not only are we doing a lot of new things here, we're also creating a lot more digital content. So mm -hmm. we have our website and Facebook and Twitter and all that. And we have our own YouTube channel. So we're, one of the things I've been focusing on lately is getting stories about objects in the museum and putting them on YouTube. I saw one recently right. about the Moxie milk bottles. That's right. So it's, yeah. it's not only coming here, but enables people at home to also visit us online. Okay, so check that out too. And once again, thanks again for having us in. And Thank you so much for coming. What a great thing coming. you guys do for the Yakima Valley. Thank you very much. Come back and see us again. Showcase Yakima, a partnership of KYVE 47 and the Greater Yakima Chamber of Commerce. Underwritten in part by Thorner Kennedy and Gano, meeting the legal needs of the Yakima Valley since 1976. And by Argus Insurance, helping you today to secure your tomorrow. And by Yakima Valley Regional Medical and Cardiac Center, home of the 15-minute ER guarantee. And by Central Valley Bank, large enough to serve, small enough to care. And by Treetop, 50 years of growing good. And by Fitterer's Furniture, quality furniture since 1896.